What's up, guys? Bonafide Hustler here. Rake and Profit in the house. Hey, guys. It's Nicole. All right. So this is a long-awaited show. This is going to be really fun. Anyways, welcome to the Green Room Hangout. It's a Wednesday night live show. I'm the Bonafide Hustler, and we all know what I do. And I don't want to bore anyone with my intro because I really want to get to the guest today. I think it's going to be fascinating. Rake, what is going on? You broke the intro, man? I broke the intro, dude. Okay, all right, all right. I'll take right. the intro. Yeah, Steve Rakin, Rakin Profit on YouTube, 29 years old, sell on eBay, Amazon, my own e-commerce store now, and a couple other things. Quit my job four years ago and love making money online. What can I say? Who do we got to my left? Well, I'm Nicole State. Um, I sell full-time on eBay, and I have a YouTube channel, State's Place, and I'm super excited about tonight, guys. Thank you so much for having me on. You Thanks are coming on. super welcome. Now, Nicole, before we get into like the nitty gritty of like where you live and you know what do you do and all that kind of stuff, you agreed you're going to bring some heat though. What does heat in Nicole's book mean? Okay, I made when you asked me to come on, I said, "How many people have you had ever? Like, what's your most live viewers?" You said 447, and I said, "We're going to hit 500." Whew. Because I like to compete with myself, you know, like that's how you get things done. You compete with yourself. You push yourself, and so all week long I've been promoting, been asking people to come over and hang out with us. We're gonna have we have some really good questions tonight. I'm super excited, so I think we're gonna hit it. You ever hear that Drake song Zero to One Hundred real quick? You know what I'm talking about? The no. horse for Drake. Everyone knows that song Zero to One Hundred real. You know, okay. There's a song called Zero to One Hundred real quick. We're at Zero to One Hundred and Sixty Two real quick. This is the <laughs> fastest we've gotten to One Sixty Two already. One Sixty Five and Seventy likes. You really do bring the heat. Your followers are super loyal. I'm actually very, very interested in interacting with you and getting some of these questions answered in the feed. First things first, guys. We got to make sure our sound is good. Okay, that's important. We won't. We don't want to run through an hour of this show and the sound sucks. So, um, check, check, Raken. You sound good to me, Nicole. Hey guys. I think we sound good. So, um, oh man, Stephanie Jennings saying you'll hit 500 plus. I am sure. <clears throat> <laughs> and I see Joe State in the feed. We have Reezy Resales. We got a lot of big players in here. Okay. So, uh, Nicole, um, you clearly have risen to a YouTube star lately, right? I mean, quickly. Yes. Very quickly. Cool. <laughs> How can people find you, Nicole? right now um right now my two main places that you can find me are youtube i release a daily vlog and the vlog is about reselling but it also has a lot of just my family and like behind the scenes and what it's really like to be a full-time reseller um and then on instagram my the instagram community is really my home and i post there probably 10 or 15 times a day i'm really really active over there 10 to 15 times. I'm not even kidding i tried to find the green room post like a week ago <laughs> i had to scroll like way down because she had like Anyway. I love it. I love it. It's great. And um, it's growing really fast over there for me. So I'm just having a fun time with it. Mm. So not to, not to brag or anything, but you're at like 10K. Don't you have like the K now on your like symbol? Yeah, I hit that. Uh, I mean, yeah, I don't like to brag, guys. It is what it is. We're just having fun. Like, I saw your vlog where you're like, it's pretty cool to have a K at the end of like your number, right? It's not like 5,000, yeah. but you have a K now, right? That's weird. It's a weird thing for me, for sure. I gotta get a K. Ray, can we have to get Ks one day, man? Well, we that's gotta, why I gotta start getting one, man. How about now? That's why I told I told the Instagram community to bring the heat tonight because maybe that would show you two that you need to start coming over to Instagram more. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure we need to be there more. I, you know, I do it a lot for my other channel, um, but no, ten times a day or something. That's just that's awesome. Honestly, like you're gonna be at probably a like hundred Ks uh, pretty quickly, Nicole. I can see this happening qu pretty quick. It's just a number. Um, it's just a number. Yeah, but man, if you do ten things, to, Raken, if you do ten small goals a day towards your overall big picture, I mean, how much, dude? It won't take very long before you become something completely amazing. I mean, that everyone knows about, right? Mm -hmm. 10 things. I mean, I can't accomplish five things that I really want to get done in a day. But anyway, okay, let's get into Nicole. Um, and uh, first of all, how can people find you on Insta? Is it at State's Place? Is that what it is? Yeah, State's Place everywhere, basically. So State's Place. Okay. State's Place. See, I type in Nicole State and that's right. It brings the State's Place YouTube, right? Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Um, okay, where do you live, Nicole? 
Oh, hold on. We have to talk about the contest. We didn't do that, guys. We, he always we forgets. Hit. Every single 500. time he forgets. I'm typing in the chat. He'll just ignore the chat. He won't I don't see in. the chat, man. I'm so, uh, I want to see the feed more. Okay, so check this out. <laughs> you guys have to t definitely pay attention for this show for two reasons, okay? There are two prizes coming out at the very end. One, pay attention to everything Nicole says this entire show because the winner of that, oh, you'll see. There's a really good prize at that one. Uh, so pay attention to everything that comes out of her mouth. Uh, the second thing is uh, there's a link down below, right? Right below this video is a link that says get 100 amazing items to resell for free. It's our guide right here. And one of our questions to win a big prize is going to be from this guide. So get it right now. It might take 10 or 15 minutes for it to download on your computer. Or you get the link and all that kind of stuff. It's a PDF. Just put it on your computer and get ready to rock and roll at the end of the show because we got two good questions coming out. One's going to be from Nicole's content, and one is going to come from our guide right up there. So first link down below, that's how you get the guide so you can participate in the contest. The contest is going to be really good. So... All right, did I do a good job, guys? Nicole, did I do a good job? No, because you forgot that we have to hit 500 people. Oh, you keep saying that. <laughs> okay, so we gotta try to get 500 you people. You had game, though, today with her Dude. with the contest. I like to compete people. and look at, I think everyone should know if you want to improve yourself, you gotta compete with yourself. And so I'm never competing with anyone else, I'm competing with myself, and I set goals, and I like to smash them, as you would say. Do you smash or compete with Joe? Oh, yeah, like all day. <laughs> <laughs> So y'all are always like competitive. Do y'all are rock, paper, scissors each other for random things? I do with my kids. Oh, you do? Yeah, but not yeah. with him. No, just... no, Nicole, when you're in the thrift store, are you guys going after the same thing? Joe doesn't really thrift necessarily. Oh, he um right. he like he will and he'll just do his own thing, but he's not like a big thrifter by any means. Mm. Okay. But he is appearing on your he's I saw him do a, almost a solo vlog the other day on your channel, right? Yeah, it seemed so, like it was all him, right? Yeah, I was really sick, and so I was like, "You just got to do it. We got to put out the content that we promised." So he did a solo vlog of him. He has a tattoo apprenticeship, um, and so he did a solo vlog of just him at that tattoo thing, and it was good. I mean, Joe has like his own audience that he plays to. He does shipping. He does all of our shipping, and so he does like what sold and shipping videos. And sometimes I'm like, "Wow, there's like a whole different viewership that he has than I have." It's really interesting. Okay. Now we're gonna get into the comment feed for one second. Um, if you are here, just type in Nicole. I wanna see how fast Nicole's blast up on this comment feed. And we're gonna get into the first question, which is uh, where do you live? Uh, first of all, where do you live? Um, so I live in Portland, Oregon. And well, right outside of Portland, Oregon, I actually live about five minutes away from Nike World Headquarters. Oh, wow. Hmm. I like which Nike is, shoes. Yeah, it's a huge thing for reselling up here. I mean, I find the craziest Nikes. Really? Like, yeah. oh, wow. Like, not experimental. Or you, there's no way. They have to destroy the experimental ones. But, like. No, they don't. They donate they them. don't? Really? I, I, get, huh. I get samples. All I have gone into Goodwills and seen an entire rack of nothing but new Atag Nike, like, prototypes that they didn't release. Do those do Whoa. well, the samples? I don't have a lot of experience no, with. It, do, it really doesn't. It's very hit or miss. I recently found two, um, two different tennis dresses that were actually made for players. And so those did well, of course, but like samples, it's pretty hit or miss. It's very depending on what it is. Mm. Wow. I wonder, is it because you don't know what the sample is? You can't call the shoe anything because it doesn't really exist. Is that what it is you think? Um, <clears throat> yes and no. It just depends on if it's like a popular style, you know, like if it's a fly knit, like an Oreo fly knit, of course mm. it's going to do well, no matter what, you know, um, if it's already something popular, it's going to do well, but if it's just like a random t-shirt, it's just a random t-shirt, right? Like no one really cares. Yeah, you said Oreo Flynet. The last Oreo Flynet I bought was like 10 bucks, sold for like 90 in like an hour. It was so fast. But if you try to buy a mint Oreo and Flynet right now, they're like 200 bucks. Yeah. They're super expensive. Anyway, and, uh, yeah. Go look up Flynet 5.0s or just Nike Chuck of Flynet and you'll be like, holy crap, there's so many weird colors. But the Flynet Oreos are really awesome. The black and white, yeah. Yeah, they're super <laughs> neat. <laughs> Um, okay, so you do have, you definitely have a family, husband, right? Joe? Yep, uh, Joe State. That's my husband. And then I have two kids. I have Des and Delilah. They are oh, almost eight and four, which is weird. And um, yeah, I mean, most of my like my days are just spent hanging out with them. And we um, we're very into we're, we're in the PTA and like volunteering at school and doing that kind of stuff. Yeah, because in your vlogs, you show not just reselling. You show a lot of stuff. I mean, it's like your daily kind of life and shopping and getting food and right. Right? Am yeah. I right? Like, I feel like sometimes with resellers, people don't see us as real people. Like, they just see us as these, like, 
these people who buy used things and sell them. So there's not a lot of like behind the scenes, like, hey, I'm a real person. Like I am a human and I have a family and this is what we do. And we're not hoarders. Like we don't have a house full of stuff. Like it's just nice to show that aspect of the reselling world. And so yeah, that's you, what we're gonna do. You rarely ever see that in, in, in YouTube videos ever. Like, and, and that's one thing I've always tried to do is incorporate like different parts of my life, like fitness and stuff. But I think that's cool, you know, because it shows a different side of you. Right. And I think it helps. I think that's one of the reasons why you have such a strong following as well, because it's not just reselling. They get to really connect with you on different levels. So yeah, that's super cool. Yeah, yeah, and then, um, I mean, the other thing I wanted to touch on just because I know that you guys are really into this is that we're vegan. I went vegan like a year and a half ago and I've lost 100 pounds since then. So like, wow. that is a big part of Amazing. our life too. So yeah, it's, it's crazy. You, you're like full vegan, 100%? Yeah, I'm ethical vegan, so I don't even wear leather anymore. Joe is not ethical, he just eats vegan. So he still wears like, you know, leather boots and stuff. Do you go, do you eat a lot of raw vegan or? No, I mean, I still eat a bunch of stuff I shouldn't, but... <laughs> it's, easy. it's still easy. When I used to tell people I was vegan, because I was vegan for over a year, and I was vegetarian for a couple of years, they used to think, like, what do you eat? Like, there's a lot of foods you could eat vegan, and you could even get... You could gain weight as a vegan pretty easily if you wanted to. Oh, it's so... The, you know, the difference is that you can't go through drive throughs and get burgers, or, you right. know, you can't eat a bunch of junk like that. But, you know, I eat donuts all the time and other things. <laughs> The desserts in the vegan aisle or like <laughs> just go on YouTube and type in like vegan desserts, like they're pretty good. They're really good actually. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. But yeah, so that's been like my journey as well over the last year or so is, you know, yes. losing weight and um it's weird. It's a weird thing and it was a slow process and it didn't it was all about just eating right and taking care of myself and it wasn't ever about like hitting a number for me. It was really about just being healthy. Mm. Do you, do you feel that that's had a positive impact on, on your, on your business, losing yeah. the weight and. Absolutely. I have so much more energy now. Like mm. so everyone's like, where do you get all your energy? And I'm like, well, I just eat right. Like I give my body what it needs and it's amazing what it does for you. I like that. That's good. That's like no part of this outline, but like, I really want that. And I'm like really excited to like, cause I see p parts of your vlogs. Right. And, uh, <clears throat> You do a lot of interesting things on your vlogs. One of the th questions I had for you, Nicole, this is off the outline, but uh, did you start your YouTube channel with vlogs as a premise or did you just start with eBay flipping kind of stuff? And did it, it was, morph into your like life kind of thing? It was totally eBay flipping and then it morphed into my life when I realized that that's the direction I wanted to go probably just a few months ago, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, you know, I feel like my channel has taken the same kind of turn as well. And I'm just, you know, it's a lot of fun to show them everything. Right. And you're right. I mean, we are, we're different kind of people behind the scenes and we love thrifting and we love all that. We love a lot of other things too, family included pets, dogs, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and so my channel has kind of done the same turn as well. And I know it, it wards off some people, you know, if they, if they come to your channel for one thing and then you morph into something else a little bit, it can, it can get some people slightly irritated, but, um, you know, as a content creator, you get to make those kind of choices on YouTube and you have to do what's best for you. And if you like taking the vlog camera everywhere and there's a story behind everything and there's a learning thing behind everything too, right? Raising your kids on, you know, a better diet and all that kind of stuff. I mean, that's a huge, powerful thing that you can be known for outside of reselling too later on, right? Yeah. And I mean, just doing the right thing with your life and being a positive influence. That's <clears throat> really what I'm all about. Yeah. Well, we're about the same exact thing. That's for sure. Um, mm. So let's talk about- I think about, we broke uh, our website. I think the people broke our website. The link doesn't work <laughs> anymore. <laughs> There's no way, dude. Yeah, <laughs> it, I, I'm testing it right now as we speak. So I'm going to be quiet for a couple of minutes. But I think Nicole brought the heat and broke our website. But She's I'm not sure. Let's, hey, you guys, wait. Hold on, hold on. We're at 373, you guys. And it's we're only 15 minutes in. Oh, my gosh. OK. So, hey, if you guys really want these contests to come quick and at the very end, for sure, guaranteed, share the video. It seems like that if some, hmm. even if like a third of the people share the video, we'll be there in like two seconds. Um, so uh, real quick, before we get into the nitty gritty eBay questions, I want to ask you about your family. I want to ask you about Joe and your two kids, right? What do you guys like to do for fun and what are the hobbies? Like when outside of the reselling and maybe outside of the vlogs, like what do you guys really, really enjoy to do? I mean, doing. I mean, nothing. I don't, I, you know, I saw that on the outline and I was like, I don't know. Today we, we went sledding. Like, it's really just, we can do whatever That's we awesome. want, whenever we want, That's you know, great. like we live in a big city. So we, 
you know, we do go to all the like children's museums and different fun things like that. We're really into hanging out with each other, um, which sounds super cheesy and corny, but I really like, I just want to like work and hang out with my family. That's it. <laughs> That's not cheesy at all. That's what most people need to do. <laughs> That's like the best thing to do. I, and there's nothing corny about that at all. I bet you if I asked the feed right now, is that corny to spend time with your family and love your family and want to be around them all the time? I don't think that's corny at all. That's like a super like relationship goal, honestly. Um, okay, so let's get into, and you, okay, last, last question that's not on the outline. I have to ask this because you said Portland and now I'm like, we got something amazing from Portland here. I have two parts of this question. One is, is Voodoo Donut all the rage or is it overrated? Yes or no? Mm. Oh, someone lives in Portland says it's not that good. Okay. Okay, but my you my BFF, one. my BFF is opening up a donut shop. And so of course I gotta say that. And there's Blue Star Donuts. So if you ever come to Portland, Blue Star is where it's actually at. Okay. It's actually at Blue Star. Okay. And Joe State says super overrated. Okay, I see it in the feed now. Um uh the other question is did you get a piece of the Portland airport carpet? No, it's gross. People put their feet all over that. But it's like a, it's an artistic thing. Just, it's like a super artistic carpet. Um, I think Joe has a hat with, with the print on it, okay, but like cool. that's as far as we go. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to know, cause I've always wanted a piece of that carpet cause it's like super iconic. Oh yeah. I have pictures of my feet in that carpet for sure. Oh, that's like all over Instagram. People's feet yeah. on the carpet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, so let's talk about eBay real quick. Um, in all the realm of opportunities, you know, Amazon, uh, there's wholesalers, uh, you know, private label, there's creating your own merch stuff, there's Shopify store, there's, there's all kinds of stuff. So why eBay in a realm of all these reselling options? Um, okay, so I sell used clothing and there's really not a better spot um, as far as used clothing goes. Like you can't really take used clothing and sell that on Amazon. You can't really take used clothing and sell it on a, you know, it's it's a really good spot for used clothing, which you can get extremely cheap. It's a really good entry point into the reselling world. Um, and then I've always just had a passion for clothes. Like I wanted to be a buyer when I grew up, essentially. I wanted to go to FDEM and learn about how to become a fashion buyer. And it's just always been my thing. So more specifically, your your eye on women's clothing is just like uncanny, right? Like you've got a good eye, correct? Yeah, I've trained myself. But I've always been into fashion, and that's that's gonna help you, you know. Okay, cool. Um, so, was that what got you started into eBay itself? Was just the whole fashion thing and the low cost and getting into eBay? That was because you left a good job that you were getting paid a good amount of money in, right? Yeah. So I um before that good job, I worked for a resale clothing store, and I did that. I managed it for about eight years. So I knew a lot about reselling clothing and it was children's clothing, but I knew how to like look over things and learn about brands and they did have an eBay store. So I knew all about that stuff. Um, and then I got into the corporate world and I had a really good job with in the education field. The problem was I have a son with autism and he really needed, when he started kindergarten, we were getting phone calls every day. Like, Hey, you got to come down to the school. Hey, this stuff is happening with Des. And at that point, I needed to own my own time. And you can't do that when you have a big corporate job with meetings and things you have to attend and deadlines. It just doesn't work that way. So I knew eBay. I always sold on the side a little here and there. We all like extra money. And so I said, well, this is it. It took me about a month to hit about $2,000 in sales. And then I quit my job and I haven't looked back. Okay, it took you one month to hit $2,000 in sales or 2,000 take home or 2,000 in sales? In sales, not take okay. home, but I was only shopping at the bins, so my overhead was so minimal at that point. That you were just making like 60% or 50% on just about it. Yeah, my oh. overhead was probably like 30% after shipping and fees and stuff. Okay, cool. Um, so that's what got you started in eBay, and now you're full steam ahead, about 600, 700. What, what, what are you at in your eBay store now? Something like that? Yeah, I vary between uh, six to 700 items. You don't have to have a big store to do a big amount of money on eBay. You just have to, I mean, at least for me, um, it's for me, I, I do qu uh, quantity. So like, I just want to sell as much stuff as quickly as I can. Okay, cool. And there are a lot of people that are saying, there's so many people in the comment feed that are engaging with this video right quick. And I saw an interesting comment fly by that was saying like, if you like Nicole State, you're gonna like this other person on YouTube as well. So while we can come to a very quick, brief stopping point, Nicole, who is your inspiration on YouTube when it comes to the uh, reseller? out there like who are you like okay i'm a good reseller but i look up to this one or i watch their videos who is it gosh i watch a lot of videos you guys 
that's a hard one. <laughs> this, okay, this person, I'll tell you, this person uploads and you're like, oh, that's it, stopping, and I'm watching it. Uh, this is like. Okay, I listen to The Scavenger Life every weekend. Mm. Like, I love that podcast. I love what they're doing, Scavenger Life. And I think we've all, you know, we all listen to the Scavenger Life. They just have such a good story. Um, I've been, uh, Reezy Resells has been a huge person for me lately. So those two people are probably my, my end all be alls. Um, yeah, those two right now. It's hard. Right. It's a hard question. I saw Reezy in here earlier. So hopefully he's still around and he's going to be all like, maybe he's blushing right now or like he's just red in the face or something. I think he sent a bunch of people over here. Ooh. So, oh, so that, so you didn't bring all the heat. It looks like Reezy brought all the heat. No, anyway. There he, there he is. is. I see him. All right. No, honestly, you're at 412. So you're getting close to breaking the 447. We're getting close, man. Uh, Nicole State Posse is about to destroy this. They already broke our website. So um, we're going to see what happens after this. Maybe we'll shut the whole show down. You never know. There might be too many people in here. Um, so you don't engage with Amazon, right? And no, but I'm going to start, I think. Oh, you are? Okay. Okay. So, so how are you going to do that then? Well, Mr. Reezy over here has been trying to get me to start on Amazon, and I think he's going to teach me, and we might be doing like a collaboration show together where we do like, I'm teaching him about eBay, he's teaching me about Amazon. Oh, that's and we cool. Have this little back and forth thing that we do every week together. So I bought a, a book scanner today from him. Woo! You're getting and, serious. You're going to go straight for the goal. You're going straight, <sighs> man. She's not even messing with this like app in the middle thing. She's going straight to the scanner. No, you don't mess with stuff like that if you really want to learn. Like you Ooh, just you spend that. the. It was fifty bucks. It was like a refurbished one. You spend the fifty bucks and you learn how to do it. You know. Rican, what did right. she get? She got that uh, KDC twenty. Yeah, I think it's the KDC. Um, that's probably like the best best one to get on a budget, and it's gonna pretty much do what you want. So she's going right for the speed, the efficiency. <laughs> she's cutting out the middleman, and uh, no, you know. Joke. She, you know, that's she's learning from someone who's already succeeded, and I think that's, you know, that's very, very smart. You know, network and associate with people who are already, you know, getting getting to those levels that you want to get to, and you know, she's learning from one of the best. Reezy, I mean, the guy, I think he's done what he did like over a half a million or more just selling books this year, which is crazy. And according to Gary Vaynerchuk, his name's Rezzy Resells. <laughs> <laughs> so Rezzy, big shout out to you, man. <laughs> Um, but you know, back to me, I'm going to teach him how to sell on eBay. So like his eBay numbers are sad and, and lonely and I'm like, all right, well, if you help me with Amazon, I'll help you, you know, learn how to touch a piece of clothing and know if it's going to sell or not. Okay. Well, that's a pretty good deal because it's basically like, I'll show you an income stream. So if Amazon crashes, like you can have fun with this and then he's going to show you one. And if eBay gets boring for you or something, you can just mess with Amazon. That's kind of good. That's a good trade off in my book. Anytime yeah. someone show, someone shows you like a different stream of income, like that's just amazing. Period. Um, especially if they take it and run with it, it sounds like you're totally running with it. Rake, and how is it night and day difference when you have this KDC scanner? Like, how crazy was the difference once you got everything linked up and right. the database downloaded and everything? How fast was it? I mean, you go from just being able to go out there and get a few books to being able to just demolish anybody out there who has a phone. Like you can move 10 times quicker and the name of the game with the books is scanning as many as you can because you'll go 20, 30, 40 books sometimes depending on where you live without getting a winner. So, you know, 30, 40 books or even 25 books could take you a while just, you know, one by one versus just having, you know, the, the Nicole State KDC shotgun like <laughs> just going right through. So, well, that's more like a machine gun, but uh, it could be a yeah. Tommy gun actually. It's the um, way to go. She's She's doing the right thing, so. That's good. So yeah, she's gonna he's gonna link you up with was it Nito scan? What is it? What is it? A rake and the one FBA that, scan? FBA probably. Scan. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Well, that's gonna be interesting. I can't wait to see the vlogs on that when you get yeah, started on that. Yeah, mm. I think the show that Reezy and I are gonna put together is gonna be fun to you know learn off of each other. As long as you don't get any death piles, you know what? I'm really I'm really proud of you, Nicole, because in in your video not too long, maybe a week ago, you're like, you want to see my death pile, and you pan the camera over, and there was this tiny pile on the floor. I was like, dude, that's something to be really proud of, you know? Like she, all she had was this tiny pile on the floor, and that was like, that's all my unlisted inventory. I was like, that is pretty cool. 
I don't believe in death piles. I think that that's money wasting away. I do not believe in that. No, you said it perfect. Like, what did you exactly say on that video? You said something so dead on that it was like, would you just take money and then what put it on the floor? Oh, yeah. What did you say? Probably like, would you just throw money in a pile on the floor and let it sit there? You know, and that's what you're doing. <laughs> you're spending money on all of this stuff and then you're wadding it up and throwing it to it's the side. It's so true. Like, you can literally you're walking back past money, but you can't pick it up unless it's list. Like, it's not converting, it's just money on the floor. And you're walking around money on the floor. I, the way you said it was dead on. I was like, that's a pretty good way to look at it. Anyway, uh, what's the death pile looking like right now? You listed like 100 items recently, right? Yeah, not very much. I do keep, I have like four tubs like that I keep um, in the garage. Right now, Portland is actually under a state of emergency because of, there's snow and we don't get snow here. So I have four tubs in my garage that are like my emergency backup because I have to list every day. Um, and so I'll probably start to hit those tubs, but so I guess I do have those, but those again, you should always have like a small emergency backup, right? Like, but it's organized and ready to go. Okay. I get it. Um, so are you finding that season now, now that we're coming out of winter and clearly Portland is a, is it a three season town or a four season town, right? Is it kind of four season, right? You can mm. proceed through all of them or no? Yes and no. Um, we get fall for sure. Summer. I guess spring and winter are kind of the same, but um, we got a foot of snow last night and we never get s snow really. Whoa. So uh, yeah, it's pretty bad here right now. Like there's, they don't, they're not prepared, you know? So the mail was shut out today. There was no mail today. So we had to email everyone and be like, Hey, sorry, can't get your packages out. And that explains the sledding too, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Um, are you, uh, are you finding, okay. So with the seasonality, do you find that seasonality plays a larger role in your eBay business at all? Um, no, I don't really think so. So whenever I get something, I list it, even if it's a pair of shorts right now and it's snowing, I do see that, you know, jackets and sweaters are selling better right now than they would in the summertime, but that doesn't mean that they won't sell in the summer as well. So I just list it as I get it. I don't play around with the seasonality game in my store at least. Because it can be safely assuming that you can also safely assume that if, you know, if you find a, okay, if you find a jacket, a women's jacket, in the dead of summer in Portland, it's going to sell. You think it sells year round? Because my philosophy is it's going to be cold somewhere in the U.S. and someone's going to want this thing. Yes or no? Do you agree with that philosophy? Absolutely. And most of the time, I sell things that are out of season to people who are like traveling, right? Like if you're going on vacation in the dead of winter and you want a bathing suit, you're not going to walk into Target and get a bathing suit. No, you're right. And International so, as well. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, things like that. Reagan, I'm sure you've experienced the same thing when you were doing a lot of men's clothing. Like, you'd sell shorts year-round, right? It always baffled me when somebody would say, you know, like, it's it's winter time or, like, it's summertime and I'm not going to list this because of that season because I, you know, I was selling winter jackets in the middle of the summer and, and vice versa. I mean, you guys are selling to the whole entire world on eBay. And if you're not going international, you know, definitely opt into the global shipping program because, you know, they cover most of the world. Obviously, they don't allow certain countries that are higher risk. But, you know, when you're selling to the whole world, there's, like they always say, there's there's an ass for every seat, right? There's always somebody in need. There's always a different reason traveling. I, I like that you mentioned that, traveling, because I didn't think of that, you know, people who are traveling out of the country or whatnot. But just list it. If you get it, list it, because when you get that death pile, it messes with you big time, right? Like, Chris, I know you've had some death piles in the past, haven't you? I have had death piles, and that can cause some serious, like, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, it, it, mess, it definitely messes with you. It, ca it caused me to get kind of slightly depressed and, like, I didn't like it at all. It cripples you. Know. Yeah, it does cripple you. I think that's the perfect way to say it. It cripples you in some weird, weird way because it's natural human behavior if you're a reseller to go after the big hitters. You're like, all right, I listed all the good stuff. Now all I got to do is just order, like, for me, right? I do, we, I do everything, right? Men's clothing, except for women's clothing, which is cool. That's why we have Nicole State here. Doing, we're learning about some women's clothing here in a second. But, uh, you know, there's some things that I'm like, I got to order a cable for that, a battery for that thing. I got to test this, but I'm, I'm missing this cord. And that stuff just starts piling up somewhere. So I've told myself, you know what? I know my behavior from now. If I see that item and it doesn't come complete, I'm not messing with it. That's just I'll the go. way I can do it. That's the way I'm like, I'm not messing with it because I know that I don't order the thing. I end up donating it like four months later to Savers and I feel good about it, but I realistically lost some money, right? I'll go so far to say, you know, there's so many people who want to learn how to like double their sales or increase their sales by like 50%. I'll go so far to say that 
90% of the people watching right now could double their sales in 30 days. I'm not saying it's going to be forever, but you can literally, if you're making five grand a month right now or three grand, you can double that in the next 30 days. If you stop going thrifting for the next one month, <laughs> just stop. You just list everything. Go on Nicole State 100 listing uh, adventures and see what happens. I mean, right? How many people are just addicted to buying, right? But their death pile slowly but surely. I mean, I've gone into some resellers garages and it is it is a uh, sight to be seen, I'll tell you that. Well, you even had a death pile too, Raken, right? With your clothing at some oh, point yeah. you had to let like someone showed up with a U-Haul too. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Well, that was that wasn't a every, that was all listed at one point and then I'd gotten out of the business cuz I'd moved into another one, so that was just sitting there. I mean, it's not like I bought it all and I had never listed it. Like it was all listed at one point, but oh. I guess in a sense you could say, but I mean, when I first got started, there was a time where I had like 200 clothing items, like 250 unlisted, just death piles, savers tags on them, like like I was so addicted to buying and and especially with clothing, right, Nicole? Like isn't it something like I don't know if you can relate bona fide because you never went like balls to the walls with clothing, but there's so many pieces of clothing out there. Like talk about that, Nicole, like you could yeah. go into any thrift store and oh. just like spend your whole day there. <laughs> People on Instagram make fun of me. I, I like, they'll post pictures of their carts overflowing and they'll be like, I'm on a Nicole state trip because I will go through an entire store and I'll, you know, check out with a whole full cart every time. But this is my trick. And I'll tell you guys, cause I heard you guys talking about this a second ago. Don't list all your good stuff right away. So what I do is I take like five boring pieces and then I take five good pieces and I put my boring pieces on my top of my good pieces and you list your boring pieces and then you get rewarded and you get to list your good pieces, right? Like you got to break it up with yourself. You got to reward yourself. Okay. So I'm the kind of guy who goes for the, the kill like straight on because I'm like, it's the money back in my pocket quicker and I get to go out with it again. Uh, by the way, we're at 436 yes. viewers. I know. Oh, we're only gosh. 10 Nicole, away so close. from hitting. Anyway, <laughs> the heat is coming. I can feel it. Um, but anyway, okay, so we're going to go back to this. Uh, I, I do want to ask the question in the feed. If you have a death pile, if you have one, just be honest, right? We, no one knows what anyone looks like except for us three right here. But you guys in the feed right there, if you have a death pile, just type in death pile. <laughs> I have one or something. I just want to see who is honest with themselves and who has a little death pile that they have not listed. Go yet. to Nicole's Instagram or <laughs> Facebook. Post a picture of your death pile on her page. <laughs> yeah, no to. joke. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just curious to see. I'm pretty sure we're going to have – oh, someone has a death pile. Oh, look at all these death oh piles coming up. <laughs> so Knock many. it off. Holy Knock fuck. It off. <laughs> you guys, I'm so sad for you. Your money. I know your next video topic. You've got to get – you've got you to bring the heat in. in you got to get on one it. of your knees and talk to them. I've been on Instagram every morning doing a live video and I've been like, hold yourself accountable, DM me right now, what are you going to do? And at the end of the day, I go through my DMs and I tell them if I'm proud of them or not because I'm just tired of seeing money and people say, I can't afford, I'm broke, why am I nothing selling? And I'm like, well, you have all this stuff, get it listed. Yeah, that's totally true. Once you get rid of your death pile, and some you're going to have to donate. Like some is just not listed listable i guess that's the word um but you just have to get rid of it right you have to sit there and almost punish yourself for making a bad decision and go i gotta donate this thing right uh and i've done it everyone's done it i do about once a year like you know people might think like you hustle a lot of great things but i do hustle a lot of things that don't sell too not a whole lot but i definitely have uh no death pal right now it's all good so um but yeah I, i'm very cognizant of how i act and i'm very um I know, I know when I go a little too overboard, right? So uh, last year was one of those, like I was correcting myself and this year I am 100% gonna be on board with no death piles. Um, what do you mostly source from? Thrift stores, uh, Portland during the garage sale season, do you mess with that? Yeah, I love garage sales. Uh, garage sales, I mean, I've gotten some of my best pieces at garage sales. I live, also there's five Intel campuses within like five minutes of my house. I live in a really high end neighborhood. And so there is tons of money at garage sales. Also Nike employee garage sales are crazy money. Are you like, serious? Like we need to move to Portland, Rakin. No, I went to a garage sale last year. Joe and I pulled up, it was on this little street and Joe and the guy started talking because Joe was working at Intel at the time. And um, so Joe and the guy started talking about Intel and this guy worked for Nike and this guy had all these shoes, you know, call Hans, really good Nikes, all of this really good apparel. And so I'm loading it up in my arms. I didn't really have prices on anything. I was going to make a bundle deal. And the guy's like, yeah, I have like 20 bucks for everything. Whoa. And things like that happen here because 
you just have crazy money, right? And when you have crazy money around you, people just throw it away. I bet you your yard sale treasure map in Portland is like out of control, right? Oh, in the summertime, there's like five, six hundred yard sales every weekend. We have, a new winner. we have a new winner. We have a new winner, by the way. Yeah. You yes, just yes. beat 447, by the way. I just saw it. So even if it was just for a second, I do want to say congratulations, Nicole, for you. You've been the number one guest on a green room hangout. Isn't that insane? Holy moly. Wow. Look at, being, this, for, is, this is what I got to say. My speech. <laughs> I have to say, I like to put my mind to things. And when I want to do something, I get it done. And this just proves that, you know, I. I put in a lot of work to just shout it out constantly and beg people and say, please come watch. I really want to do this. And it's not going to happen if you don't ask for it. If you don't ask for it, you're not going to get it. Mm. That's like straight from the Except secret the DVD right there. No. <laughs> Sounds like the secret. <laughs> you ever watch that DVD, Raken? You don't talk about? I uh, watched it. It's playing in the other room right now. <laughs> <laughs> There's a part where a guy's on his bed and he's like dreaming of driving a Ferrari. I don't know if you've caught that part. Yeah, it's he's kind like, of funny. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I know that part. Like envision what you want, and the guy's like making Ferrari noises, driving an invisible but Ferrari. But his face on his bed. is priceless in that yes. the pr the face that he's making. What are you talking about? It's this okay? It's a DVD called The Secret. Okay, does anyone in the feed know what I'm talking about? If you watch The Secret, the DVD, there's a there is a scene where a guy is like, and maybe in a chair, I think he's sitting on, he's sitting on something and he's driving an invisible Ferrari making Ferrari noises. And they're like, he's like, and anyway, he's they're projecting teaching the himself. principle of visual, visualization. He, oh, okay. Exactly. If I can pronounce yes. it properly. So I thought, <laughs> okay, so some people, some people will know what we were talking about. There we go. There we go. Okay. So, and by the way, I did see it go to 450 at one point. So now you've really shattered the goal. Um, we're trying to get to 500. Let's see what happens here. Um, so garage sales and thrift stores, bins, yes or no? Are you out of the bin business? Are you still in it? You're in the bin business still, right? Yeah, I go two or three times a week yeah. um, to the bins. And then I hit up uh, Goodwill and some Salvation Army. So there's not a small, there's not a ton of like small stores around me. So, okay. Um, so let's talk about your go-to items to sell. What's your number one thing when you go to a garage sale or you go to a thrift store, you're like, okay, this would be like the number one thing I look for. What is it in women's clothing? What do you look for? Is it a shoe? Is it a type of garb? Like what is it? Um, so the way I hit goodwill is I go shoes first and then dresses. So like shoes and dresses, not like a number one shoe to sell or anything. I just look for, you know, high quality shoes. Um, and you start to get an eye where you can just see that something is a good shoe, right? Um, so I go shoes and then dresses. So those are my go-to spots in the store. Okay, shoes and dresses. And by the way, we have 22 minutes left on the show. There is a contest at the very end. When I said this at the beginning of the show, there was only like 100 people like listening. So there is a contest at the very end. We have two, get, two kind of prizes we're giving out. One is going to be based upon what Nicole is talking about here on the show. The second prize is going to go out, and it's going to be a question based upon something that's in this guide right here. And you can Not find it work. the very first – huh? It's not oh, gonna work. really? Website. So someone yeah. got it. Yeah. Some people have it. We'll see what happens. Possibly, but that page, I don't know if... if Nicole something... broke our website, dude. We're going to have to like... The send website the works, our website but that, that page is just like... Shot? Just like PHP error. Die. Okay, so let's... Like the uh, page is like done. We'll send her the bill. We'll send her the bill. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But yeah, we'll still make a... Uh, we're going to have something that comes out of that guide. So if you got the guide before the crash happened then you'll be eligible for this contest. You'll see what I'm having. You're going to want that guide, though. So if you have it in your computer somewhere, you downloaded it like a long time ago or something, bring it up and have it on like a page really close to you because a question is going to come out right at the end of the show regarding that guide, something interesting. Okay, um, so let's uh, now talk about if we looked on your eBay pie, how much of the women's clothing, let's say, would be shoes? How many would? How much would be... Uh, casual, formal, and then maybe uh, swimmer. Like, what, what does your eBay oh. pie kind of look like, right, from the top, looking down? I don't know. Um, I just put that it was 90% clothing. So <laughs> um, that's a really hard question. I don't know the answer to that one without actually going in and looking at it. But um, I know that my top sellers are, like, sweaters and dresses right now. So those are like my top okay. two that I'm selling right now. Um, but it would probably be a pretty fair mix of like all the different things because I don't discriminate. Like I just go and I get whatever is good. So I go through every single section in the store. 
Okay. Dresses. That's that's interesting. I've never sold a dress. I've never really sold women's to begin with. I mean, oh. I've sold thousands and thousands of men's items, and uh, dresses. Tell tell people about what what do you what do you look for for dresses? Like what? So think it, about it. Like dresses, you only need one piece of clothing, right? So like, if you're a woman, you only need a dress, and you're good to go. So people will spend more money on a on a dress than they will just oh. a shirt or something. Mm. And my goodwill prices them about the same. You know, a dress will be seven ninety nine, a shirt will be four ninety nine, six ninety nine. So there's not like a huge price jump. So my margins are a lot bigger when I can get a dress than a shirt. What do you like to sell your dresses for? Like, what's a good price for you? Like, what what range are you typically messing um, around with? Like twenty five to forty is like the average probably range for a good dress. Um, are those usually over first class? No. Are those no, they're usually they're pretty light. Yeah, so they're they're under first class, so you know, three bucks to ship it. Um, a lot of margins. Yeah, it's pretty good margins, and then if I can get it at the bins, even more so, it's like fifty cents, and so you're making a ton of money selling that sort of thing. And if it's from the bins, it's like I'm okay with it being like twenty bucks. You know, like it doesn't have to be a huge dollar amount. Okay, now, I see what you're saying. Right. I, I just got one more question because I'm I'm actually very interested in it. Um, don't know if I will find myself in a women's section shopping for dresses, but uh, <laughs> to each their own. Anyways, with with dresses, can you sell dresses that aren't really branded well? Like they're not a super popular brand, but it's just got like a super cool, crazy design. Because I see like so many dresses that are like just amazing designs on them, and I don't know if they're good brands or not. Um, I can, but I have built a brand within my store. So people know my store for clothing. I have a lot of repeat buyers. Oh, really? Um, I have someone who comes to my store every single day and buys three to five items. Wow. Like, I'm not joking. Joe even talked, we talked about it the other day because we're like, what is happening here? It's been happening for probably three or four weeks now. Same person, really nice. They communicated with me. They just like what I sell, I guess. Like, I don't know. So, you know, I started to build a brand within my store, and so I have a lot of repeat customers, so I think I can. Also, I sell on Poshmark, um, and Poshmark, you definitely can do that kind of thing. You can definitely mm. do style over brand, but I still try to stick with brands. Okay. Let me ask you this. Like, looking at, uh, let's say, you know, your clothing genres, you have, like, swimwear, you have casual, you have dresses, you have shoes. Where are you more likely to hit a home run? Or if you look back in your eBay kind of like selling history, like where do you go? Okay, you know, I, I hit home runs quite often in shoes. Like what, what is it for you where you're like, yeah, that's that's not – it's not hard to hit a home run in that category. What would that be? Um, shoes and jackets. So shoes probably for sure. Um, you can do really well in shoes, especially with brands that other people don't know. You find a good pair of leather shoes. You buy them for, you know, $5, $10, and you sell them for 70 to 100 so shoes, I feel like you can get a lot of good home runs. Um, and then jackets. So you can find really good jackets. A lot of people don't want to buy jackets at the bins because they're heavy. So they're not buying it because they don't want to pay 2 or $3 for it, which sounds silly. That's crazy. But, you know, like I picked up a wool J. Crew uh, jacket the other day, sold for $100 as soon as I listed it. I got it at the bins, and someone had thrown it back. Because it was too heavy. I'm sure that's why they didn't get it. It was like five bucks. Wow. Was and that a women's? A single hole in that thing, yeah. huh? Every time I see wool things, Reagan, have you seen holes in wool clothing? Nicole, you've got to see All it. the time, yeah. Right? I see them all the time, yeah. too. Do you scan this thing up and down when you get it? Um, yeah, and because I worked at a resale store for six years, I'm really good at like knowing the spots to hit. But I still bring I bring home stuff with holes in it. I don't mess with it. It just gets redonated. Okay. Yeah, good. And you're not afraid to redonate, right? That's what it makes wow. you great. Is like you, you embrace what takes year, people years to figure out. Is you know, you have it's it's like kind of like the stock market. You you got to have some losers in there, right? And you got to donate some of this stuff back, or else you're really going to have a problem when it comes to home. And you're like, I'll get to that one day. You'll never get to it, right? Or if there's something wrong with it, or if it has a hole, and you found it out later, or a weird stain, or it might even be shrunk a little bit more than what you thought, and you're like, oh, that's definitely not a large. It, kind of looks like a small mm. you know i don't want to take a chance with my feedback on that thing um you know everyone makes bad decisions even the best of the resellers and you have to be able to sit there and go what do i do with this bad decision do i learn from it and nicole you learn from it you also take it you know back when you need to right not take it back but you donate it donate it yeah, yeah. Right? i don't mess around with returns because i have relationships with everyone at my goodwills and i don't want to be known as the girl who returns things 
So look, if I made a mistake and I bought it and it, there's something wrong with it, I would just donate it. Um, I don't want to be known as that person who takes back things all the time or, of course, you know, I want to have a good rapport with the people who work at the stores that I go to two or three times a week, you know, mm -hmm. now, now, now some items you can sell with a flaw. I know when I was selling men's clothing, you know, there's certain items that are so high end and, and, you know, hard to come across, you know, maybe it goes for 60 bucks in great condition, but with a hole, you could still get 20 or 30. Now, um, do you have kind of like a bottom line cutoff in terms of like the lowest priced item you would sell? Like, do you not go under 10 bucks or 15 no. or? So I, um, I sell things cheap all the time to get my best match search up essentially. Um, so I do believe in like a loss leader and that's just something that happens in retail if you're selling in volume. So I want eBay to look at my store and see that I sell a lot and keep pushing my items to the top. And so the stuff I get at the bins, if I sell it for, you know, eight, $10 and it's a shirt and I'm making a dollar off of it, I'm okay with that within a certain percentage because you have to get your store boosted to the top of best match. If you're selling clothing, you're not going to sell anything. You've got to get your numbers right, right? You've got to. Let's Hit talk that. more about that because I've never heard anyone kind of mention it that way. We've, you know, I've heard, I've always said it in the past too, the more you sell, it seems they promote you more and the algorithm starts to favor you. That's why I like running sales because when you run sales, you get more sales. Something happens with the, with the eBay algorithm. Talk a little more about that in terms of like somebody who's maybe new and they're having trouble, you know, landing sales. You're saying maybe lower the prices or do whatever you can to get things moving because that's going to bump your store up and, and, and increase visibility overall. Yeah. So it, none of us know what the secret algorithm is. Right. So let me like preface with that. Oh, um, I thought you were going to tell us. I wish I knew. Right. But I do <laughs> know from working retail and kind of having that background that the more you sell, the more you sell, like the, even if I have to sell things for seven ninety five um, free shipping and just get it out the door. If I'm selling, you know, 10, 15 items a day, my higher dollar things that I want to get 80, a hundred dollars for are going to get pushed to the top and best match because eBay sees my store as a store that's making money. And when I make money, they make money. And so my items are getting better ranking and best match. And I don't like things to sit in my store. So like once something reaches a hundred, 200 views, I need to get it out because it's weighing my store down. So I'll auction it and get it out the door. Like I don't yeah. want stale inventory. You can call eBay and get a stale inventory report. You know that, right? I so guess. you can, <laughs> yeah, like you can call eBay and you can be like, hey, I need a, a stale inventory report and they'll send it to you and you can see which items are not getting um, as good of ranking and best match because they're stale items. Okay. Wow. That's interesting. Do you combine all this stuff with a sale? Like how now not talking stale, but talking sale, right? The word sale is your store. Nicole, stop looking at it. Sorry, I'm really excited. <laughs> but do you, do you, four ninety five? Uh, holy mackerel. I just looked I know. at it. Do you, uh, what's your view on sales, putting your store on perpetual sale or maybe a day lapse and then you put it on sale again? Like how do you do it in your store? Um, I have a really good, rhythm that I do. So first off, I do half off my whole store every Sunday and I promote it on Instagram and I say, Hey, if there's anything that you've seen in my halls, now's the day to do it. You know, and I have people who'll buy from me that way. And then aside from that, I do, I always have a sell running. Let me try and explain this to you. So I start a sell Monday and then it will end on Wednesday. And then I start a sell Tuesday and that sell will end on Friday. So I always have a sell either starting or stopping every single day. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I have two sales running with each other. Are these on different parts of your eBay store or different? Like, how do you have two sales running at the same time? Fill me I list that. a lot. Oh, my God. Reagan. Yes! Oh, my God. Oh, yes! my God. This is I his, snapped this it right is, when it switched over. I'm sorry. I, this I is historical. I've never seen. Oh my gosh, guys! What, what number were we going for? Type it in the feed right now. What number were we going for? Was the holy Nicole crap? The comments going are going it. insane right now. Oh my gosh! Thank you guys so much. No, I, I really I, I need cannot to believe thank it. you to everybody that did this for me. I know a lot of my followers. And I hate saying followers. A lot of my coworkers is what I like to call them. Because we're all in this together. Thank you guys for supporting me tonight. It means a lot to me that you did this. That, that's that's 
I don't know if we'll ever break that again. That is amazing. Um, when you're wow. at when you're at twenty thousand YouTube sc- subscribers in three weeks, Nicole, um, we'll be at a thousand or something viewers on your next show. Watch. Um, but anyway, that, <laughs> this is really incredible. I, I gotta say. So I had to interrupt you. I'm sorry, but I didn't know when it was gonna go five hundred, then go back to four eighty, and I was like, I have to stop her. Anyway, I, yeah. No, I had the screenshot already. Right when it hit, it was like, boom. It was oh, you, did it? you may as well yeah. just keep screenshotting because now we're in record territory now. We were in record territory a long time ago, but anyway, now we're, we're really, in the unknown right now. We're in the unknown, the Nicole state unknown. Well, let's, um, tell them, let's give them some info on eBay. So that's what I do is my, my sell is every other day. Essentially, I'm going to sell stopping or starting every day. And because I do try to list so much and I run things on 30-day, um, I only do okay. 30 day, I don't do good tell cancel the 30 right, days. So okay. I caught every day, I'm, you know, relisting. So it, it works out. I always have a bigger cell that has like, you know, 400 and then I'll have like a 200 cell, but I just want it starting or stopping every day because I feel like that helps my algorithms. Yeah, that's very now, interesting. Now you also involve Instagram. You said, right. You tell people on Instagram that you're running a 50 or all your sales are just this 51. Uh, 51 is the one that I promote heavily. So, um, I've also been messing around with the direct links so you can, you know, run a cell that you have to click the link for to get the promotion. So I'm playing around with that a little just to see where my numbers are. Um, but I do run a half off sell in my store every single Sunday. Everything in the store is half off. No exceptions. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> did you notice a huge spike that day? Like, yeah, usually, like- I usually do, you know, 600 to $1,000 that day every week. Oh, that's phenomenal. But you know what that does? That helps push my listings up in best match, you guys. Like mm. it, it really does. And people can argue with me all day long. There's and something to it. I know. I, 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 after selling thousands of items and bona fide, you've sold probably more than I have. I mean, there's something to it. When you run sales, when you get things moving, eBay rewards you. I mean, at the end of the day, when you sell an item, eBay makes money. They want you. They're in. They're. They're not in the game just to be friends with everyone. They're there to make money. So whatever they can do, if you're selling, they're going to reward you. It's bottom I line. I think they reward you when you list almost every day, as opposed to like listing only once a week. I know this is a weird thing to say, but I've noticed small correlations between like if I'm to divide, like if I'm, if I'm like, all right, my my listing goal is 50 a week, right? 50 high quality ones a week, and I do them all on a day. I know it'll give you a nice spike, but like, I know if I do like, you know, 10 a day for five days, that's a lot better for eBay because they see you, I think, looking into your, you know, your actual store more often and you're more liable to put things on sale. If you're always in your store, if you're always in your business, you're always tweaking things around. Like in an antique booth business, I have one. Like if I go to my booth all the time, like literally every single day, which I don't do, but if I did, I would move things around all the time. I would start adjusting it because you're tweaking it to make more money. That's essentially what you're doing it, what you're doing, right? Can, what do you think about that, Nicole? Like, if do you go, you go uh, in your eBay oh, store every single day? I'm right? like a every strong day. believer in this, guys. So I list right now. I'm I'm really focusing on YouTube as well, and like, I think I know Reagan can relate with this. Like, it's hard to do everything. So my goal was always 50 listings a day, and now it's getting cut back a little bit because I'm also working on trying to grow on YouTube and help people learn how to do eBay and things like that. So it's really doing more like 30 listings a day. Um, but I feel like you do have to do list every day and also certain times of the day matter for me. You can go into eBay and see when you get the most sales of the day, right? You should be looking at these reports. You pay for a store. You need to look at these reports. You can see when you're getting sales throughout the day, right? So I know when I get sales, right? So I like my items to be listed right before those sales come in. Um, so there's like a morning period and an evening period. So I will even schedule my listings out throughout the week that. to make sure that I'm hitting those times. Because when you have a new listing, it gets that fancy new listing boost in best match. Yeah. Wow. I, I'd be convinced that you actually work for eBay after at the end of the show. I'm telling you. <laughs> you <laughs> and I'd even much. go as far to say when, when you time it perfectly, even if they don't buy it, the more people that are clicking on that listing – it's pointing to the algorithm saying there's people interested, there's something of value here and they're probably rewarding you for that too. Yeah. I mean, who knows? All I know is that I make enough money to pay my bills and I, all of these things are, you know, tried and tested. Like I've, I've tried it all and you have to pay to, to schedule things, but it's always worth it to me. Like that 10 cents that you pay to make sure that your listings are going out. Say you're going to go on vacation or you're not going to be able to list for three days. 
just schedule it out, you know, pay three bucks and have 10 listings go up every day. It's a good point. I like that. Uh, Do you use any third party uh, softwares or anything? No, I know I should. I know people are always like, you should use this and you can get, I don't, I just don't. Sometimes it's more work. Like I experimented with a lot of different ones and like a lot of them didn't work for me just because I don't know, like even like the, uh, the turbo lister at one point I had a uh, virtual assistant helping me out with listings overseas. And like, have you ever tried the turbo lister, Chris? Uh, never have. I think it's a turbo lister. Isn't that what it's called? Like I hated it so much. And like, even like ink frog and right ink frog. Yeah. It's been a while. Um, I don't know. Sometimes it's cool just to stick with what works, right? Like you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Like you're making it work. Like you're making a full-time income. Like sometimes if it's not broken, why try to fix it? Right? Yeah. I mean, I just, I have uh, templates that I use and I just go as fast as I can and knock it out. Cool. Um, while we're on the, uh, the notion of templates, we're talking about items now in your store, right? Cause you're off, you're listing off templates. Um, let's discuss easy, to find an easy to resell clothing items. Can you give me five and you're like, real quick, we're running out of time on this show. It kind of sucks yeah. because you are literally like the best guest that we've had, but um, <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, other items to look for, e uh, easy to find. This is the key, easy to find and easy to resell. Yeah. So you've thought about this. Uh, what are your five picks? Okay, so I didn't, people always want a brand list and I just want to preference this with, I don't do brand lists because what I can find is going to be different than what you can find. You should be doing what you should do to figure this out is just do solds and do like 50 miles within your area or your zip code, which you can do on eBay. So, you know, type in shirt, look within 50 miles and see what brands are selling. So do that on your own. But the five things style wise that I look for right now, anything hundred percent cashmere tweed blazers and jackets tweed is really in right now. Um, anything lace, especially if it's like off the shoulders and has like a bell sleeve, um, staple pieces for the office because people don't want to spend a lot of money on office wear. Like when I worked at an office, I would go on eBay and buy my pants and my, you know, my skirts and my blazers and stuff because I didn't want to spend a lot of money on the clothes that I didn't really care about to begin with. Um, and then any good quality leather shoes. Okay. So any good, good quality leather shoes. Okay. That's good. I like that you didn't go brands. You went for like the, yeah, so it gives people kind of like, oh, you know, look in this area of your thrift store, maybe, um, you know, this is where you might be able to find some good stuff. Yeah, because we're all going to find different brands depending on where we right. live. That's true. Uh, now let's get a little bit harder, like a little bit harder clothing to find, but still really good profits. If you can find it, it's almost like guaranteed home run. Like what is this type of genre? Three um, okay, so three things. Again, it's so lag and look. Lag and look, L A G E N L O O K. Lag and look. look. At, Tell, what is this thing? Tell us. What lag it is. and look is it's German for layering look, and it is hot right now. Google lag and look, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Anytime I get a lag and look piece, it's big money really quickly. And so okay. there's a ton of different brands within that. Go look up lag and look, and make sure you're using that in your title. Um, the second one would be high quality sports brands like your Lululemon sort of thing. Mm. Um, and then the third one, one, yeah. And the third one, which Chris, <laughs> you'll appreciate is cycling clothing. I sell a lot of, you know, bibs and padded seat things, you know, the shorts of the padded, padded seat, seat things. She called them padded seat things. She just <laughs> called them padded seat things. Okay. No, that's cool. <laughs> I, I like four of them last night. I get them at the bins all the time. You know, it's a quick 25, 30 bucks. Yeah. Bibs jerseys basically or cycling. Yeah. You, you're right. Bibs it's jerseys. PSTs. Cool. Well, that's cool that you do cycling stuff. That's interesting. That's that's. I didn't know that about you. That's cool. Um, you must find a lot of it in Portland. There's so many cyclists oh, out there. Yeah, there's like, <laughs> it's a huge culture out here. Do you ever see people that are like super hipster, like lumberjack looking people? I'm sorry. Like I have to ask now because yeah, have you seen my husband? Well, your husband like is a <laughs> tattoo like dude. No, like, yeah, I he's do. Not I trying think... to be like looking like. I mean, he's literally like in that genre like he he can he can dress that and no one can call him anything else right i'm talking about other people that you know haven't picked up an axe or like haven't done anything out like you know what i'm talking about yeah they they have a trust fund and they have like a beard and flat shirt on and you're like you're living in the pearl district which is like the crazy expensive district in town and you look like you're homeless like i'm not sure if i should put money in your cup or if that's an expensive cup of coffee yeah Oh gosh. Okay, so you do see this. I see this. I see this in Austin sometimes, and it's kind of funny. And there's there's some funny things that go around town. Like, look at this 
person. They call it something different, but anyway. Portlandia is a true. It's a true show. That's true. Yeah, they say it's hipster ground central in Portland. That's what Chris S says right here. So that's pretty funny. Um, okay, so uh, we're gonna fast forward to one yeah. because we're we're running out of time here. So, um, the do you do you do anything special for your customers when you ship out your clothing? Let's say in first class mailers, do you put a card there? Nicole, mm, for coming question. from Nicole State, uh, any stickers? Anything that kind of brands you? Because you strike me as the kind of person that's you're like ahead of the you're ahead of the game here. Like, so um, do you do anything, or if not, it's not a huge deal. But no, what do you so do right now, I don't want feedback unless they want to give it to me. So I don't ask for feedback because I feel like that's asking for negative feedback. Um, so I don't put like any sort of like give me feedback. Don't give me feedback, please. Like most of the time, if it's a feedback, it's, <laughs> you're not happy. Like <laughs> just, so, just leave me alone. <laughs> leave me alone. Um, so we are branding. I'm trying to work with like Alibaba and get a bunch of states place bags. So, but I want to order them in bulk because it's way cheaper with our logo, like you know, Polly Mellers with our logo on it. Um, so I'm working on that. Hopefully by the end of the month, I'll have those. And then the thing that we ship in, so this is what all of our clothing looks like. It's folded into these clear bags and we ship in the clear bag. So we don't use like tissue or anything. Um, and I have gotten people who have messaged me being like, thank you for the extra protection by putting it in this extra, you know, clear bag. So that's all we do. And we just do this for storage purposes, but it's in a clear bag and a poly miller and off it goes. Nice. Cool. So you don't get much negative. I mean, do you, when it comes to negative feedback, are you very proactive? You're like, all right, I treat this pretty seriously. Like, uh, you can have the clothing. Do you kind of do that? You strike me as that kind of person. Um, yeah. So I basically will, you know, I'll refund people all the time just to be like, hey, just I'm sorry. You know, I always try to apologize. I will go above and beyond to do anything I can to make it right. But at the same time, right now I have seven negative feedbacks from the last year. I but I have four thousand positive ones. Oh, wow. So okay, like, yeah, I see you're, <laughs> you're gonna get. <laughs> negatives with positives you there's no way around it yeah, especially with clothing the people that don't sell clothing don't understand but if you sell clothing like there's so many things that could go wrong <laughs> there's so many things that could go wrong so uh you yeah. know you had four thousand positive in one year is that your total no one year Holy mackerel. That's a lot of items that you sold right there because most people aren't gonna leave feedback. That that just goes to show how many items you showed uh, sold. Yeah, we ship, you know, so probably excited. five, whew, we probably do 500 to 1,000 in a month, depending on the month, wow. so a lot. That Holy mackerel. And, and, and your listing, your, your goal was what, listing 50 a day? That's a lot, right? Didn't you say 50 a day? You had 100 a day the other day. Did you do 100 in one day? Yeah, so my sell-through rate right now, um, it varies between like 80 to 90%. So I don't sit on things, guys. It's the name of the game when you're selling clothes. They're low dollar, you know, I'm not Ronnie, like I'm not selling high dollar things. I'm selling, you know, the, the $20 items all day long. And so it's all about getting as much out the door as fast as I can. Can I ask you a question? Like, it's kind of a, you don't have to answer it if you don't want to. Ask it. <laughs> can I, do you like, do you like the ones that are just like, uh-oh? Do it, what is it? Starts with social, no, I'm just kidding. Um, how, how many hours a week do you mm. think you put into this business? Like, honestly, like how many hours? Because that's like when you're telling me that you're yeah. listing that many, I'm thinking to myself, holy mackerel, like, does she have a life? Like, I'm just being honest. No, you're, that's a good question. People ask me that all the time. Um, it's hard to say because, like, I do things all the time with work, you know? So, like, but I'm really fast and very efficient. It's all about being mm. efficient. And that's a important. lot of, right, like, so yesterday I took photos of 100 things and it took me about two and a half hours. Wow, that's very efficient. Holy Whoa. mackerel. The that's right. Like to not get distracted. And I do flatten it lays now. I kicked out my mannequin. Mannequin was taking too long. Some things might look better on a mannequin. My flat lays look pretty good. It takes a lot longer to put it on a mannequin. I'll tell you that right now. Especially if it's, it's – did you have a dress for a mannequin before? Yeah. Yeah, it takes – okay, keep going. Um, and so for me, it's about efficiency. So if I'm selling – I'm not trying to get the top dollar out of my item, so you're not going to get the top photo. My photos are good, though. Like I have like a whole thing that I do – they look good, they're good enough, and my listings are wow, very cool. simple. You get two measurements and three sentences out the door. <laughs> that's good. You're laughing, really but good. you know, with clothing, like that's really. I've good. actually started doing that as well. I actually do you list um do you do you list uh, via mobile or are you actually doing the the whole camera SD card? No, everything is on my phone. So wow, 
you know, how on and, earth do you do a hundred in like two or three hours? I can wow. Photos? It's easy. Like, oh, you gotta stop. Being on Facebook. <laughs> you gotta stop getting distracted, right? Like, you gotta do little rewards. Um, stop getting distracted, and then listing takes longer. So Joe will help me with listing sometimes too. Like, he'll build drafts for me or whatever. But I have templates, so you know, I have my women's shirt template. I only have to fill in like five things on that, throw the photos in, and upload it. Oh yeah, true. The templates do speed it up, especially if you have something that can be replicated, like clothing. So I, I get it now. Okay, that's really, really awesome. That's still amazing though. Like <laughs> that's that. still really amazing. <laughs> With templates, still, I'm like, wow. I want you to, I want incredible. you to record yourself doing that and then put it in fast forward. Just speed it up for like a three minute video. <laughs> no, and then a close up of your eyes after two and a half hours. I did. I did it yesterday. <laughs> yesterday, I um, I did like you know time lapse and. Uh, when I was taking my photos or whatever, and I'll have to check that out. You just get it done, and stop spending so much time researching. You know, people spend half an hour researching one thing that they're only going to make twenty five dollars on. Yeah, that's bad. Like, stop spending five minutes tops as my research time. Otherwise, I just do my best. Okay. Well, cool. Wow. Uh, five hundred twenty seven viewers. Oh my gosh. So now we have a super record in the books. Um, Screenshot time. <laughs> yeah, take that. Okay, so let's get into like the fun part. Uh, we well, not the fun part. This is probably not the fun part anymore because like, the whole fun part was the entire show. But we 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 promised um, Nicole that, uh, and I was going to give this away regardless because just this is a. I've always wanted to have like lately. I wanted to have Nicole Smith on the. I'm oh, sorry, Nicole Smith. Nicole State on the show. Why am I call, saying Nicole Smith? Um, but I want to have her on the show, and um, she agreed, and we were like talking back and forth and all this stuff, and she's like, I'm going to bring 500, and I was like, whoa, that's going to be very hard. You that's messaged hard to me do. a week ago. That's you hard to do. I, I, can't, when I, you really said cannot, it. I can't believe it. It's not that I'm, da I'm a doubtful type of person. I just know that how long it took us to get someone that could bring 447. It took us two years of shows, right? And so, uh, and it's a person that was on TV, <laughs> mind you. It was someone that had a show and big following, like a, a Facebook group of like 10,000 plus people. Um, so it was a, you know, anyway, so your, your posse is super loyal. Like I, I'm very, very impressed. There's someone in the feed here, uh, something, something 1967 that's saying, you know, you're the real girl, you're the real dude, real girl, whatever. Uh, you know, Nicole brings the heat and like all this stuff, like truth be told, look at the number best in YouTube. You know, yeah, I remember you were like, yeah, if you do that, I'll, I'll give away something. And I was like, okay. Oh, you okay. totally did. So that's the part of the show that we're at. We're the something part, right? Um, yeah. So one of the things that the green room is going to give away um, is we're going to give away a $25 to your PayPal straight paid tonight to your PayPal. You're going to have to get in contact with us, okay? Uh, Rick, in the email that they need to get in contact. As yeah. Uh, no, support at greenroomuniversity.com. So we'll link it up. We'll link it up after the show. We'll put it in there uh, how, to, how to get a hold of us. But support at greenroomuniversity.com. Support at greenroomuniversity.com. Okay, so remember that because here is going to be the first $25 in your PayPal. That's when the first prize is going to be something that Nicole is going to ask right now. So if you paid attention to the entire show, she's going to be thinking about something. I know she's on the spot right now, but I can see it. But uh, think about something and then, Nicole, look at the feed and be real quick with your eyes and just tell me <laughs> who. All right, I'll, and I'll write the person's name down. Like who. Am I like trying mind tracking this or am I asking this right now? No, you ask like any question you want from the whole okay. show. You quiz these okay. people. We have 514 people that one of them is about to get $25. I got it. No, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got okay, what's the I'm question? laughing because it. I don't know how you're going to track this in the feed. It's like having <laughs> Roger no, Clement throw 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 throw. going to make a hard no. question. Watch. Joe, you're in charge right now. He's in the feed. Joe, you got to help me. You got to be my partner. What did me and Joe and the family do today? Oh, that's a perfect question. I love it. I love it. I love it. What did we do today? All right. Tell me who's the first one. Someone shout out the first person. I know what the qu the answer is. And Joe's, Joe's saying, okay. He's in there waiting. Okay. Boom. Oh, Jennifer. Got it. Jennifer, you win. Oh, is that that's Jennifer right. Leland? Yeah, yeah, Jennifer Leland. She's on point. She's in the okay. green room. Um, we'll, so we'll invoice her. her. I know. We know thank her. You, very and thank well. you, everyone. Who's, who's <laughs> Look how fast now. the sledding thing is. Holy mackerel. <laughs> I love you. I want to oh go sledding gosh. after this. So that fun. That is good. Oh my gosh. All right. So the second question is, and this has to do with hundred amazing items to resell. If you're lucky enough to have not crashed our site and you have the guide, um, I'll give you 10 seconds to get prepared. Okay. And the question to that, and this is going to be worth a one month uh, trial 
membership in the green room university okay we're just going to bring you into the university you'll have to hit me and Rakin behind the scenes on facebook okay very important and just say i, I want it uh, this was me this is my handle blah blah blah. prove it with a screenshot of your youtube channel whatever um so here's the question all right so hopefully that i'm gonna have the guide ready what is the number two item on the guide that's it that is it let's see who gets a free green room membership and if you're in the green room we'll comp you what a one month would be all right so what is the second item in the actual guide <laughs> we'll just make it up items. okay okay, okay. Let's see. I, see, I think i see one guns? is it guns uh, yeah. uh crap i saw it i think it's daniel ridgeway well there's some specifics there's ridgeway and there's also terry dickens i would give it to terry dickens because his I think no, that's, that's not specific. No? Okay. Dan, that's specific. I would love to give it to him. I really would. But Daniel Ridgeway came in with the full. I mean, if it was just Jeopardy, right? Is that what's his name? Who runs Jeopardy? Trebek. Trebek would be like, son, get out of here. Um, okay. No, okay. no. What's okay, name? okay. So Daniel Ridgeway, please get in yeah. contact with me behind the scenes or Rakin behind the scenes. We'll get you into the green room for a single month. Or just message us. support at greenroomuniversity.com. That's the easiest way. Okay, so we kept Nicole uh, State 12 minutes over an hour You're promise. Uh, Nicole, I do want to tell you thank you so very, very much for being on our show. Um, I can't believe what you've brought. <laughs> you've brought 525. <laughs> Rakin, that is now the, the, the max. But you know that, what? That's I, insane. You know, I went to college, but I never really studied anything to do with math or, you know, I was never a mathematician. I mean, that you had 500 people following, but only 354 people liked it. So Let's what do they Nicole have to do right them. now? Have Nicole ask them, like the video. Let's see if we can get that. Thing <laughs> Wait, over let me me. Do, let me do my best rake and profit. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, please, no. <laughs> Smash the like button. That's what you say, right? Put some bass Smash in your voice. <laughs> I don't have any. So, okay, do you, you do it, Rakin? authoritative. Come on, Rakin. Do it. Smash that like button. Yeah. yeah, there it goes. It's going. It's almost. I want to see 400, and we're off the show. And by the way, 527 was the number confirmed by Pinching Pesos Deborah, who also has a YouTube channel. Go check it out. Uh, 527 is the number. So that is the official number to beat from now. That, that's going to be impossible. Wow. Okay, so holy moly, 407 with seven down votes. I'd say that's a successful show. I Nicole, wait last time now. I tell you this, but thank you so much for being on our show. <laughs> thank you. Hopefully, it won't be the last time you're on our show. Um, we definitely want to see where you end up with the Amazon thing with Reezy. I want to see. I'm pretty sure we'll see. Everyone's going to see it through your YouTube channel and through uh, Instagram. But uh, thanks for being on our show. We really, we thoroughly enjoyed uh, what doesn't even seem like an interview because it seemed like just fun hanging out with you. Yeah. Well, thanks, Nicole. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for having me, you guys. I've been wanting to come on for a while, but I didn't ever ask. That's the problem. So that's, thank that's, you that's the thing, though. You you work so hard, and we got this. We saw you. We found you, and we were like, yeah, we need to. Like this, this, this girl is uploading all the time. It's super amazing, relevant information, and it's different. Like it's women's clothing. It's different stuff than what, when she's doing vlogs. So, anyway, thanks for everyone to keep it real on the in the comment feed as well. I'm sorry we couldn't get like a massive Q and A going, but this feed was so fast, and uh, I really wanted to get some really interesting questions out of Nicole Dunn. We've covered donuts, sledding. We've covered swimwear, leather shoes, all this really fun stuff, and you know this. Uh, best match thing which is interesting i have never heard a guest talk a whole lot about best match with ebay so that was really the stale inventory report too that was pretty interesting yeah really really good stuff so if you did like the show make sure to hit the like button okay after the fact because we'll see it and we'll see you on the next green room hangout take it easy guys and gals see you later